What do you mean you didn't know he got married? He talks to his brother every day. She said, who told you that? I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers. How many brothers do you think he has? I said, he has four brothers. I named them. She said, he has two brothers. She, got, she said, he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said, twin? Who was the twin? Welcome to part 31. Who the fuck did I marry? So I found his mother's obituary online. It then told me um, it listed the <laughs> it listed his brother in Philly and his wife. It listed Legion, and then it said his wife. I took the name from the obituary and I did a Metro Atlanta court search with that name. I found a divorce record. <sighs> I found a divorce record with Legion and the same woman's name that was in the obituary. Um, in that divorce record, it looks like he's the one that filed for divorce. This would have been around 2016. This was after the mother's death. He filed for divorce. She was the respondent. I think that's the correct um, terminology. Both had a temporary protection order against each other. He had one against her. She had one against him. The divorce ended up getting... Um, granted finalized then it looks like he went on his way in the course of the search for her name i discovered that at one point in time the two of them had lived in rhode island so that's the connection with rhode island because for the longest time i could not figure out was who lived in Rhode Island. Um, that's where that came from. The two of them, he and this woman lived in Rhode Island um, several years prior or a few years prior. Um, I could not find the obituary for his dad. Um, I, I searched and I searched. I could not find the obituary for his father. For whatever reason, I just, and I knew the, I knew his grandmother's name. I just randomly decided to do a Google search of the grandmother's name. Initially, nothing came up because I was looking for the grandmother's name in Philly. Nothing came up. I looked for the grandmother's name down here in Georgia. Found um, a record, but it was not... Um, it wasn't quite clear. What was clear was that she had died several years prior. So what I found was um, a different website where it was like a like a legacy.com type thing. So I believe legacy.com holds old obituaries. Did a search for her name, found a match. That is when I discovered that she actually had passed away in July of 2008. Read the read the caption of the obituary and verified that, in fact, it was his grandmother. She because at the bottom of it, again, obituaries tell you a lot. It names um, who who she leaves to cherish her memory. So it lists all the different family members. It lists the brother in Philly. It lists Legion, no spouse, and then a brother in Nashville. Once again, it did not list the two sisters, Shantae and Kim. So I'm even more like, okay, clearly um, something, you know, is, is, is up when it comes to Shantae and Kim. Because, but what I do know is that he has um, talked to them multiple times in front of me. So I'm not sure what I'm missing. Maybe some family feud happened. I, honestly, I don't know. So that is how I discovered that 
when he told me the grandmother died from COVID and he was crying, boohooing and all that shit, she actually had died in July of 2008. I found this out the same time that I found out about allegedly, and I say allegedly because I'll explain, allegedly the first um, wife, or at least what I think is the first wife. So while all this is going on, Legion is almost bedridden from what happened with his knee. And I need to take a moment to address this issue with the knee. Again, the story started, he hit his knee. Then it turned into, um, it was an old football injury. And this has happened before. He's going to the doctor. The doctor's telling him to ice it and to elevate it. He eventually moves into the guest bedroom to be more comfortable. I'm going to make this statement. This is probably the only time I will make this statement. He was not lying about the injury that he had. I don't know where the injury came from, but what I do know was he was not lying in the fact that he was in pain. You could clearly see that he was in pain and the pain was becoming debilitating. Please understand what I'm saying. The pain was debilitating enough to where he was taking my pain meds from when I had um, the miscarriage. And then also it was hard for him to walk. He was not eating. So this is what made me believe this, whatever was going on with the knee, there was more to it because he was not eating. When I met this man, he was a size three X. At this point in time in May, he's down to a two X. He is not exercising. He is not doing anything mobile. He's simply not eating. So there definitely was something going on, something concerning. Honestly, I thought it might have been cancer. But he kept saying, no, it's not that. It's from a football injury. It's from a football injury. I said to him, the next time you have a doctor's appointment, I want to go. It was that bad. Um, and he kept making excuses like, okay, fine. I'll make the appointment. I'll let you know what it is. Cool. I will take off work. I want to be at that doctor's appointment because whatever is going on with you is serious to the point where you are losing weight rapidly within a two week span. So now we can go ahead and enter into June. Um, when we enter into June, I have verified, read the divorce documents for not one wife, but two wives. I have called San Diego State, verified they have no record of him. He claims he was a private citizen. I don't believe that. They're saying there's no record of him. I have pulled his background. It is showing that you've lived in Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, and Georgia. When I look at the addresses, it is tied to at least two women, both of whom I'm showing divorce records on file that you had. Um, I've also verified that your grandmother actually died in 2008 and not in 2020 from COVID. I know all of this as I'm going into June. His birthday is June 17th. So all I've been doing is just trying to figure out what is it, what is it I'm going to do? I spoke to the pastor and his wife. I believe it was actually the pastor I spoke to because I knew the pastor um, previously before he did our marriage counseling. And I told him what I found. Mine blown. Mine blown. Had no idea. He knew something was up. He knew that Legion was not really trying to make this marriage work. He had no idea all this was going on. So he asked me, are you wanting to stay or do you want to end the marriage? I said, oh, absolutely. I'm ending it. Oh, hell yeah. I'm ending it. I, 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 I have to. I have to end it. Um, I have no idea who that man is in my guest bedroom. Not to mention, on top of all of this, he had lied about the death of the ex-wife's daughter. Part 32. Part 32. Who the fuck did I marry? All right. 
So we're now in June. By this point in June, um, I have been offered the new job, accepted it, put in my two week notice at my previous job and was going to be starting this the, the new job later on in the month. So when he left where I told him I wanted to get a new job, that laughter fueled me to get a new job. <laughs> so here's what happened the beginning of June. He's at this point, he's completely bedridden. When I say completely bedridden, what I mean is, um, I'm trying to clarify this so it makes sense. From what I see, he is going to work, but he's calling out a lot more. Okay. So he had already left the condiment company and was working for Apple. So he's calling out quite a bit because the pain is pretty bad. So he's hardly eating at this point, hardly. For example, if I were to say, oh, I ordered a 10 piece wings, he's eating two. And that's it. That's all I would see him eat. Well, I was going to work and coming home. The house was the in the exact same um, place that it was when I left. Nothing in the kitchen had been moved. Nothing in the refrigerator had been moved, which led me to believe that he had not left the bed from the time I left to go to work until the time I came home. At this point in time, he's drinking power aids like it's water. I mean, I'm buying cases of power aids. Um, and that seemed to be the only thing that he was taking in. So if he was a 3X when I met him, he's probably at a 1X maybe a 2x depending on the clothes he's lost a lot of weight because he's not eating so that's the reason why i say he wasn't faking whatever was going on i think the knee the issue with his knee was a symptom that was not some football injury that was not um oh i hit it at work it wasn't that something else was going on i had kept asking him to you know let me know when you have a doctor's appointment i'm gonna go with you i'm gonna go with you and um, he just kept saying the doctor to he's he's calling the doctor and the doctor told him to just keep icing the knee. But I knew better. What was happening was I didn't care. Because of all the stuff I was finding out. So beginning of June, he is in a bed um, sleep and I get his phone. I ain't gonna lie. I, I got his phone. He had a work phone and he had um, a personal phone. It was the work phone that he had from the condiment company that apparently was never turned in. Follow me. It all come out. So he still had the work phone. It was deactivated. But he did not wipe the phone. If y'all know what I mean, take all the data off. He did not do that. So I looked through the phone. And I see this would have been text messages, text messages between him and a woman named Peaches. I go back to the beginning of the text messages. This is on the work phone. This is the beginning of June of 2021. I go back to the text messages on excuse me, the beginning of the text messages between him and Peaches. Yes, that was her name. Peaches. I'm reading the thread because he's knocked out sleep. So I'm in the bathroom with the door locked, reading the thread. And what I can tell is that he met Peaches on POF. If you don't know what POF is, it is Plenty of Fish, a dating website. He met Peaches. This would have, I saw the messages in June. So he met Peaches around February. Um, met Peaches from POF. And apparently Peaches... Um, was, you know, there's no nice way to say it. apparently Peaches was, was a prostitute. So be, and the reason why I say that is because in the text messages, she's listing the prices. 
So he asked for a hand job. This is in the text messages. She told him it would be like $40. He asked how much would it be for oral? She said um, it would be 60 um, because it was 60 and 80. One was the price with a condom. One was the price without one. So no messages after that. She sent a picture. He sent a picture. No messages after that. So in other words, these messages were not back to back every single day. There's breaks in between the messages. So like a message was in March. The next message is in April. Message in April. Next message is like two weeks later. So um, he's asking her the prices. Next message I see would have been from a few weeks prior to the date of this. So this was the beginning of June. This The message is from sometime beginning of May where he is thanking her and says to her, you know, thank you so much. That was really great. I hope I can see you again. <sighs> then there's messages where she said, hey, basically she was at an, she was at a new spot. She must have moved. So he said, okay, I'm gonna come through. I'm gonna come see you. He's asking her to confirm the address. He was like, is it the house with the brown trash can with a white car in the front? She says, yes. Yeah. So I'm thinking he was actually in front of the house when he's texting these messages. Then again, he does whatever he does. And he sends her a message a few hours later saying, thank you. That was great. I'm reading all this. Um, and I will tell you guys something that you may or may not understand. Some women may or may not understand it. The cheating didn't even phase me. Didn't even phase me. I didn't cry. I didn't, um, I did not feel like, what did I do wrong? I was relieved. The reason why I was relieved is because up until this point, I kind of struggled a little bit on whether or not God, you know, I know, I know, Lord, you hate divorce. But I can't, I just, I, I can't stay with a guy that lies. So when I saw the cheating stuff, I was like, oh shoot, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Cause I know my father in heaven's going to forgive the fact that I'm going to divorce him for infidelity. Go ahead. It's fine. I'll, I, Jesus will forgive me. Um, so I was, I was, I was relieved to be honest with you. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I got grounds now, bitch. Um, that's how I felt. So saw the messages, forwarded the messages to my phone. Um, or excuse me, I took, I had to take my phone because the phone was deactivated. So I kind of had to do a little ghetto, hold the phone up, take my phone and take pictures of what I see on the phone um, so that I would have proof on my phone. Then I put the phone back and continued on. Now in the next part is the day that he gets kicked out. And I will tell y'all what happened. Part 33, who the fuck did I marry? June 17th, 2021. So you guys have been on this ride. You now know exactly what information I did have. The morning of June 17th, which was his birthday. Um, he was in the bed as usual. Powerade bottles all over the place because I wasn't in the mood to clean. Um, and so I went in his room. He was awake. He was watching YouTube on his cell phone. He watched a lot of YouTube watching um, these two guys that always were fixing Jeeps on YouTube. Um, and if I saw them, I would know exactly who they are, but I can't remember their name. It's a popular show on YouTube. Anyway, so I go in there and I, I just calmly sit on the edge of the bed and I was like, can we talk? And he was like, yeah, what's up? I said to him, I said, Legion. Obviously, I called him his name. Legion. I said, I'm going to ask you something. I just want you to be honest with me. So he starts, I can already see in his eyes, he's about to get defensive. And I was like, calm. Because this, this is the tone I had. Calm. I said, um... You never went to San Diego State, did you? He rolls his eyes and he's like, I already, I said, calm down. 
Watch your tone. <laughs> I said, you never went to San Diego State. I said, you never lived in California, did you? And he said, of course I lived in California. He was like, I fucking showed you the house I had in California. He said, and I told you about San Diego State. I was a private citizen. My dad paid for me to be a private citizen. And I said, okay. I said, I called San Diego State. And he looked at me. His eyes were like empty. Like he wasn't shocked. He wasn't like, oh my God. He was just more like, okay. I said, they have no record of you. I said, they have no record because you never went. You never been to California. So at this point, I'm very calm. And I'm just stating, I said, you never been to California. I said, I bet you've only lived in Georgia, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. At this point, now there's, there's a little emotion behind the eyes. And I said, I don't think that this is going to work. And he said, what, the marriage? He was like, so what you saying? You you don't want to be married to me anymore? And I said, I don't want to be married to you anymore. I said, we need to go our separate ways. We tried, but we need to go our separate ways. The way that I am talking to you all is exactly how I was talking to him. Um, and so he was like, that's not what marriage is. Marriage is, you know, you, you, you have to fight for what you want. I said, I don't want this. And I don't want to fight for it. I said, I don't want you. And I don't want this. And so he was like, I'm not giving up on the two of us. I said, you don't have a choice. I said, I think that you should call your brother or your sister now. And I think that you need to pack a bag. And I think you need to get the fuck out my house. And he was like, you know, I don't really have time for this. You know, I don't feel what I said. I don't care. You need to get out of my house. Again, the way I'm, I know y'all are going to be like, she's so dramatic. And in real, I am actually a very dramatic person. But the way that I'm talking to you guys on this video is exactly how I was talking to him in the beginning of how this started. So I said, you need to call your brother um, or call your sister because she's she's in Douglasville and you need to go stay there. You need to get out this house today. <sighs> Basically, what happened was um, at first he refused, he wasn't moving fast enough for me. Um, and so he called his aunt and his aunt was on speakerphone. Let me preface that. She was on speakerphone. And so she was like, you know, what's going on? And he was like, my wife don't want me no more. She, she claimed that I'd be lying to her. I ain't never lied to her. When I heard this, what's the analogy I can give y'all? When I heard him say to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her before. Something in me snapped. The best analogy I can give you. Do y'all remember that movie, Carrie? When she was at the prom and everyone was laughing at her. Um, the blood had had fallen down on her and there was a moment where her eyes just went wild and you knew something was about to happen you just didn't know what but y'all had pushed her too far when he said to his aunt I ain't never lied to her I snapped the calmness left the amount of rage that was in me, I could have fought every member of the Kansas City Chiefs and beat every last one of their asses. I could have fought every member on the Atlanta Falcons and beat every last one of their asses. I'm not a violent person, but I was I was the, I was there. That statement, I ain't never lied to her, took me there. 
I went off. I w- I went off. I went off so bad that I first of all every part of me was shaking. I called my mom. My mom was on speakerphone and she's in Arkansas. My mom's a praying woman. I was cussing like a sailor. My mom finally said, um, you know, put him on the phone. So I gave him the phone and I'm standing there and I'm looking around the room. Is is the scene that I remember is the Angela Bassett scene in Waiting to Exhale when her eyes are darting around the room right before she grabs everything to put it in the car to set it on fire. I was more so looking at what weapons were in the room, the lamp, the TV, the dresser. <laughs> I was I was looking more. I mean, I was while she was talking to him, my eyes were darting around the room because if he did not get his ass up and get his shit and get up out of my house, um, it, it was it was going to be bad. If I have never in my life been on TikTok and said, thank you, had it not been for the blood, y'all, I'm, I, I, can't, I know this is going to sound dramatic. I know this is going to sound like, girl, you, you so funny. You don't understand. Had it not been for the Lord on my side, had it not been for the fact that I know I got a praying mother. I know I had a praying aunt. I know I've had a praying grandmother in heaven because I'm telling you, I clearly saw what was getting ready to happen had he not gotten up, got his shit and got out of my house. So I'm trying to calmly say this because I'm trying to calmly tell this story because the rage had taken over me the pure unadulterated rage that I felt when he said to his aunt, I ain't never lied to her after I had discovered only 2% of the lies at that point, just 2%. So it was enough for me to be like, you need to get your stuff and go. So my mother gets on the phone and she says to him, you know, Legion, she called him by name. Um, She said, I am not there to control my daughter. She said, in the name of Jesus, get your stuff and get out that house because I think she might kill you. Get out of the house. She's on my phone. His aunt is on his phone. His aunt said, nephew, come home. Home for her was Philly. She said, I'll send you money. Come home. Leave that house right now, she said, because I think that that woman is about to kill you. Let's go. Let's just go to part 34. Let's all just take a deep breath. Part 34. Who the fuck did I marry? So the aunt told him, I'll send you money. Come home. I'm I'm yelling in the background, by the way. I'm not standing there calmly. I'm yelling. I said, oh, he got money. Yeah, you got money. You got money in that offshore account, right? You got money in that Chase account. You got money to drive. So do what you got to do. I told him. And I'm not going to repeat some of the stuff I said because my mom might see this TikTok. But um, I did tell him, I was like, if you don't get out of this house, you going to actually what I said was you have two options. You either going to leave this house voluntarily or you're going to leave this house involuntarily. And he tried to get a little he tried to get a little nook if you buck. He tried. And that's when he, because he was still on the bed, still laying in the bed. And he was just like, you ain't going to do shit. Like, don't talk to me like you done lost your fucking mind. Da, da, da. And I calmly got close to him. I got like this close. And I literally said, I will beat you like the bitch you are. I dare you to try me. I said, I will literally beat you like the male bitch you are. And so when I said that, his eyes were like, I said, I'm not even playing because at this point I'm 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 rocking like back and forth. Y'all, again, I'm not some hardened type chick. I'm not. I want the soft lifestyle, but I have been pushed to the point. So I'm rocking. I'm walking back. I'm pacing. So finally, his aunt was able to get through to him. 
I had called my aunt, my mother, my aunt. I had called the pastor. I had called all these people because I did know that I was in a very dangerous place. Not because I'm scared of him. At this point, I was scared of me. I don't know if this has ever happened to someone where you know your own, you know yourself. You know that you got a line. I was over that line. So I had enough wherewithal to be like, okay, okay, you're probably going to go to jail today. You're probably going to go to jail. Um, you probably ain't going to have th that job in the morning. Like I, I was there. And again, this is not to sound bragging at all. This was, this was a woman who I, c I could not believe that even with the the attempt of me trying to give him one last opportunity to tell me the truth he still lied in my face i i was at my edge so i pulled i yanked the covers back and um i told him i was like get up you know get, get the fuck out of my house again i'm saying it calmly on here it was nothing calm in the house when this happened so I'm throwing stuff, throwing stuff up against the wall. Um, I, I remember I looked at the lamp. He looked he looked at me looking at the lamp. And I think that's I think something in him realized. OK, I, I, yeah, I'm in pain. But if I don't get up, she she's going to do something with that lamp. So he does get up. He is still on the phone with the aunt because the aunt was pretty much like, keep me on the phone. She did not want him to hang up. <sighs> he throws some stuff together. Again, keep in mind, he has all his stuff in the house. So he basically packed like two bags worth of clothes. Um, and he's limping around and I'm standing in the hallway watching him like a probation officer. So he's limping around. Um, and I'm looking at the condition of the bedroom. This is when I noticed Legion had been semi bedridden. Remember I told y'all that because the knee and other stuff. I look at these bottles of Powerade because he had been drinking Powerade so much at this point. He was not getting up to go to the bathroom. He was drinking the power aid and then using the empty bottles to pee in. So there was about six bottles around the bed. And I was like, what is this? Because again, I hadn't really been going in that room. I was busy being CIA, FBI and Homeland Security for the past two weeks. So I was like, what is this? He was like, I'm going to throw it out. He grabbed a trash bag, put the bottles in there. And I said, what are in those bottles? I said, tell me. And I said, I think I started like twitching. Like, tell me there that is not piss in those bottles. He was like, I couldn't make it to the bathroom. I was in too much pain. So at this point, I'm even more like, yeah, get the fuck out. Get out. Um get out of my house so I helped him while he was packing his bags I went downstairs I took the house key off of his keys um I went back upstairs he had his two bags I grabbed the two bags yes I did I grabbed the two bags I had opened up the garage I had already popped the trunk for his car and threw the bags in the car I did that because I was like, you getting out of this house. You getting out of this house today. You can't come back. You can't come back ever. So I he it took him about about two hours um, from the time of I will beat you like the bitch you are for him to actually leave the house again. I'm calm telling you all this story. It was not calm in the house. So he eventually puts on some sweatpants. Now I can fiz I can really see how much weight he has lost. But he puts on some sweatpants. He puts on a shirt. He's limping down. He's like, you really going to kick me out on my birthday? I just looked at him. I just looked at him. 
opened the door. He went through the garage, got into his car, called, you know, his aunt was still on the phone and she was like, I'm going to send you some money. And the, and that's the part I was like, clearly he has the money. Like, you ain't got to send him money. He doesn't even have to go to Philly. He can just go get a hotel for now. I don't care what he does. He just got to leave his house. So he ends up getting in the car, driving off. My mom calls and she's just like, you know, is he still there? I said, no. Um, I, I had not told her what all he had lied about. Even in the midst of me being angry and me going off. I never told him that I spoke to the ex-wife. I never told him I knew he was lying about the stepdaughter. Because then it would have he would have asked how, you know, what makes you say that? Um, so I did keep my word. I never told I never told him I spoke to her. So he eventually left. I text a friend of mine. I text my landlord. I said, I have an emergency. I need to know if it is okay to get the locks changed. Landlord was like, that's fine. Um, my landlord was super cool. Shout out to Mr. Patel. Um, I went to Home Depot, bought brand new locks, text my text a friend of mine, asked him, when you get off work, can you please come by my house? I need the locks changed today. So he was like, oh, okay, what's going on? I said, I'll explain it later. So to give you a timeline of June 17th, when I asked him about San Diego State and I told him that I know you've never even been to California, that was about 8, 30, 9 o'clock in the morning. By the time he left the house, it was maybe going on noon, 1 o'clock. So this happened pretty quickly. Um, if, you're at, if you're wondering, why did you even ask him? It re- I, I already knew that... I wanted out. I knew that. But for some reason, a part of me was like, let's just see if he'll be honest just one last time. And he wasn't. And it sent me into a rage. And then he lied to his aunt saying, I ain't never lied to her. And that sent me over the edge. Um, so by one o'clock, by one thirty, he was gone. By 2.30, um, I had done a pretty good job of cleaning up the, the bedroom. He had thrown away the Powerade bottles. Um, so I didn't have to touch those. I stripped the sheets, anything that he touched in that bedroom. I stripped the sheets, threw them in a the trash bag, threw them out in the trash can. And so it, most of this was adrenaline. Adrenaline was pushed because I hate packing. I hate doing all that stuff. I went on Amazon. I ordered oversized large tote bags because I was packing up all his shit. Part 35. Who the fuck did I marry? So I packed up all his stuff. Okay. The reason why I packed up all his stuff is because so I had a three bedroom, two and a half bath townhome. One room was the guest room. Obviously, there was a master bedroom. And then we had a TV room that he had made like his Philadelphia Eagles man cave. I was going to put everything that belonged to him, pack it up and put it in the TV room because the plan should have been that he's going to come back and get all his stuff. Okay, so that's why I did it. Um, And honestly, it just felt good (laughs) to pack up his stuff and and go through it freely because when he packed in a hurry he left obviously really important things he left all his Invicta watches he left all his WWE championship belts if you know anything about WWE championship belts you know those things are expensive he left all his Jordans he left um suits he left uh Cole Haan shoes left all that because he it was such a hurry for him to leave so all that was still in my house um so around 2 30 I think I, I wasn't even at a place where I could start crying I was just too angry still shaking packing everything up packing everything up one of the things that he left um is a photo album with all the pictures of his mom and dad and his siblings growing up Now, I had the thought of I was going to have a burn party and I was going to put it on Facebook Live. 
I was going to burn it with my friends and drink and dance and play music. But um, it's his deceased parents. I do have a heart. So I put that somewhere special, me meaning I put it up in the closet. Um, he t had told me that he was going to come back and get his stuff. And so I just did not, I, I didn't throw anything out unless it was like I, something I knew was trash. Other than that, I put everything up and kept it, you know, in the TV room. So that's June 17th. Also on June 17th, I had already ordered his birthday cake. I had ordered the birthday cake like the end of May because it was like a special birthday cake. So I also had to go get the birthday cake <laughs> from the bakery in East Point. Um, and I took it to my family's house and we ate it. Yes, I had left the house, um, went to my family's house, filled them in my aunt my little cousin and my grandfather because my mom was in Arkansas. So I went over to their house, filled them in on what was going on. They could not believe it. Although my grandfather then told me, he said, he ain't look like he was a football player. He was like, I didn't want to say nothing, but he ain't look like he was a football player. <laughs> Gotta love grandparents. Um, so we ate his birthday cake. Went back home. Um, the friend that I had called came changed all the locks changed i changed the security codes um effectively he would not have been able to get in that house so that is what happened on june 17th so now we can fast forward he he would text me and he would call me that he got to philly apparently he drove through he left georgia and immediately went to philly so he immediately went to Philly um, and he did text me and said that he made it to Philly and he was staying at his aunt's house. I know that this is a short part. That's OK, because what we're doing now is I went through how we met. I went through how we dated. I went through how we got married. Um, now I'm taking you all to June 17th. The week after June 17th. He's in Philly. He still would call me. He still would um, text me. The conversations we were having the week after June 17th. So this would be June 18th up to the 24th. The conversations we are having had to do with divorce. So who's going to file? And he was like, well, I don't want a divorce. So I'm going to fight you on it. Are you? really are you gonna fight me on the divorce um i didn't know anything about filing for a divorce so but i refused to stay in a place of ignorance so i um went online there's a website that you can go to where you pay like a 200 dollars, 239 thirty nine dollar fee and you fill out basic information and you choose your state you choose your state and they will um, process, not process, but they will make all your documents. All you got to do is print it out and take it to the court. And it is step by step directions. We didn't have any property with each other. We didn't have any kids with each other. So by the state of Georgia's standards, this should be an uncontested divorce. So the conversation that last week, the week of June 18th to the 24th, was about divorce what stuff do you want to keep well i'm gonna come and get all my stuff i just don't understand why you couldn't talk to me about it. i said there's no room for talking because you've been lying to me since day one um but even still keep in mind as of june 17th june 18th june 19th i did not know what i know now so the lies were really only like five percent of the whole story so june 24th or 25th is when I had printed my documents <laughs> and I'm laughing because at this point in time I've read y'all's comments about how that man will print out stuff I know but um, I used the website typed all my stuff in got my documents and then I went um, I took a day off from the job because I was getting ready to transition into the new job so I left work early went to the courthouse 
and filed for divorce. I filed. I paid. Um, and then I already had the documents where he would have needed to sign so that um, it could then be entered into for a divorce settlement agreement. So going into part 36 or 35, I know there's so many parts. Going into the next part is where I can tell you guys what happened with him because he drove to Philly and he was in Philly for about a week maybe three to four days. <sighs> then I get a message on Facebook Messenger from a woman claiming to be his cousin. Lord Jesus. So the cousin tells me, well, actually I can tell y'all. So the cousin tells me that he's there. He's telling the family that I kicked him out. He's telling the family that I kicked him out after he walked in on me having an affair. That I stole his money and I then kicked him out. And the man I was having an affair with, he said, was a law enforcement officer who used his duty weapon to threaten him to get out the house. This is what he told his family. And the cousin was reaching out to me. She found my, she found me through a search on Facebook and was reaching out to me because she's like, we know he lies. So I'm just trying to figure out what, like, is this true? Because he's up here asking us for money, asking to stay on our couches. Like what's, what's going on? Then she explained to me, we didn't even know he got married. So this is the first time we're hearing about you. What do you mean you didn't know he got married? He talks to his brother every day. She said, who told you that? I said, I've heard him talk to his brother every day. All his brothers. She said, all his brothers. How many brothers do you think he has? I said, he has four brothers. I named them. She said, he has two brothers. She, got, she said, he has the twin and he has the older brother. I said, twin. Who was the twin? Welcome to the next part where we discover the real family tree. Part 36, who the fuck did I marry? The family tree. Please fasten your seatbelts and put the tray tables in the upright position. Let's go. All right, the cousin, I'm not gonna name her. The cousin had reached out to me on Facebook, asked me to please give her a call so this conversation was on the phone yes i was actually speaking to her she informs me again about the whole he's up there he's telling everyone that he walked in on me cheating on him it was with a law enforcement officer and that the law enforcement officer um used his duty weapon to threaten him to get him out of the house. The reason why I'm sp I'm particularly mentioning the fact that he said it was law enforcement is because he was trying to get a family member, like one of his cousins, to call the agency of the law enforcement officer and file a complaint, which in hopes would then start an internal affairs investigation. Yeah. So female cousins on the phone with me. She's telling me everything that he is telling them. She's like, look, we know he a liar. We don't fuck with him. We, he's been a liar since a kid, but he's also family. She said, we didn't know at all who you are. So I thought that that was interesting because I was like, you didn't know who I was, but his brother knew who I was. And so again, that's when I said to her, that um i was like i've talked you know he's talked to his brother every day so I, why wouldn't the brother tell y'all that he had gotten married and so she said what brother and so i told her the brother's name and she said he told you that i said he was having the phone calls in front of me so at this point what the cousin said was she was like okay I'm going to confirm that with him. She was like, he lives up the street. So I'm going to just confirm that with him. She was like, because I'm pretty sure that they, that they have been beefing for a while. I was like, I can only tell you 
what I saw, what I heard. That's that's all I can say. So then when she asked me about well, how many brothers do you think he has? And I said he has four brothers. Again, I listed all of them. This woman was like, he has two brothers. She said he has the twin and she and he has the older brother, the one that he was on the phone with every morning, blah, 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 blah. I said, twin. Who's the twin? <sighs> So this is where she explained to me. She said the parents, mom and dad, had the older brother. The um, older brother is uh, about five or six years older than Legion. Legion and the younger brother who lives in Nashville, they are twins. So when he kept saying the younger brother, my younger brother, by two years, it's his older brother by 20 minutes. They are twins. I have seen a picture of this brother. Yes, they do very much look alike, but they, I didn't know they were twins. It doesn't even matter. I didn't know they were twins, um, but definitely they had a mom, the same mom and dad. So she was like, no, that he's older. He's older than Legion by 20 minutes. They're twins. She said, so the parents had three boys, brother in Philly, the older brother and the twins. She was like, who the hell are these sisters that you're talking about? So I tell her, I was like, Shantae and Kim. She said, I don't know who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter. Kim is not his sister. Kim is my daughter. And she said, that's his cousin. She was like, and they haven't spoken in about 20 years. So no, that's not his sister. He does not have any sisters. And I said, well, then what about the other two brothers? She was like, what other two brothers? I said, the brothers from his dad. She was like, you mean to tell me <laughs> this man is going around telling people, I know somebody's going to quote Nicki Minaj lying on your dead mama, but try not to. Um, she says, you mean to tell me this man is walking around lying on his dad saying that his dad had kids outside of his mom? And I kind of stuttered like, yeah, she was like, he does not. She said, I have no idea who those two men are. She said, those are not his brothers. But if y'all remember, I've met those two and he introduced them as, you know, man, this is my, this is my brother, uh, John, this is my brother, Matt, you know, type thing. And so they both were like, oh, my sister is good to meet you. It's good to meet you. Remember that because obviously I do eventually talk to those two men again. So she says to me, the family tree is mom and dad, the three sons. She was like, there are no sisters. She said, I don't have a clue who Shantae is. She said, Kim is my daughter. So that's just their cousin. But again, they ain't spoken 20 years. I said, okay. And then there was the grandmother. She said, yeah. She named the grandmother. She was like, yeah, she died in like 2008. I said, yeah, he told me that she died in 2020. And that, you know, all of you were coming down for the memorial service. And she's just like, she died in 2008. I said, then there was the uncle who also died from COVID. She was like, which uncle is that? I told her the name. She said, he's been dead since like, shit, 2010. I said, okay, what about the cousin nicknamed Junebug? Everybody got a cut. If, if you're not African-American, we all know a Junebug somewhere. Um, and she just was like, oh, yeah, you know, you know, cousin Junebug. She was like, man, that's that's crazy what happened to him. And I was like, what you what what do you mean what happened to him? Because I know he has talked to his cousin Junebug on the phone like, few, you know, a few months prior. He was like, and so she said to me, she said, yeah, he had passed away in like 2016. So this is now three people that she's naming that I recall him having either a story about or a phone call with. And she's telling me that they are all passed away. So this is when the conversation kind of changes. And she's like, you know what? She said, let me speak to the older brother um, because he probably wants to talk to you. She was like, you probably should talk to him. And a lot of your answers 
a lot of your questions will get answered. She was like, this dude's been lying ever since he was a kid. She was like, uh oh, she said, literally, we don't fuck with him. I remember her saying that verbatim. She was so adamant. She was like, and when he showed up here out the blue, talking about how his wife cheated on him with a law enforcement officer and how the guy took his gun out and threatened him to leave the house. She was like, we knew something was up. She was like, that's why I had to find out who you were and reach out to you and find out the truth. I said, there was no other guy. There was no law enforcement officer. And she was like, yeah, because he was telling us where to do work and how we should go ahead and file, like help him file a complaint so that this dude could lose his job. I said, there is no other person. I said, I kicked him out. That was me all by myself. No gun, just my fist. Um, and so she said, you know, he tell he telling us that he had gotten married. And then she was like, apparently y'all had a baby. So she was like, so you got a kid with him. So I had explained to her. I said, no, I said I had a miscarriage back in July or excuse me, back in June of 2020. And I had to have surgery in July. So she was just like, girl. So she started like really being encouraging and was saying, you dodged a bullet, honey. She was like, I don't wish this. She's like, I, I know he my family, but I don't wish him on no woman. So we we've had each other's number. She was like, if you need anything, please feel free to call me. She was like, I've had my own issues with him. I've had my own issues in life. But she was like, get your divorce and be done with him. Then she said, I'm going to put you in contact with the older brother. Next part is me finally talking to the older brother that he had been talking to every morning. Part 37, who the fuck did I marry? So at this point in time, I have filed for divorce. Um, I paid for the filing fee. I'm representing myself uh, pro se and it should be an uncontested divorce. During this time, Legion had driven to Philly, lied to his family and said I had cheated on him, um, that he caught me and that the guy I cheated on him with was a law enforcement officer who used his gun to threaten him to get out the house. None of that was true. At some point while he was in Philly, he ran out of options in terms of where he could stay. Family members did not want him to stay with them. Um, apparently, a lot of bridges were burned, according to the female cousin I had talked to on the phone. So he left Philly. Left Philly and went to Augusta. Yes, what you were hearing is correct. He drove from Georgia to Philly. Stayed in Philly for about three, four days. Left Philly, drove back to Georgia, went to Augusta. Keep in mind, if you have lost your notes at this point he was raised in philly and did high school in augusta before he went to california so he has family in augusta so at this point he's on his way to augusta to stay with a new set of people the reason why this is important is because what i have is a divorce settlement agreement that divorce settlement agreement has to be signed by the two of us where we are basically telling the court look this is what he's keeping this is what i'm keeping i need his signature let me repeat that i need his signature because i wanted a very quick and painless divorce as much as it could be so by this time this is now around june 25th so around June 25th, he's now in Augusta. He had left the house June 17th. So between June 17th and June 24th is the trip to Philly, then leaving Philly, coming to Augusta. Um, my aunt and my little cousin get in the car with me <laughs> and I drive to Augusta with a, with a rag on my head, some sweatpants and a tank top because it's July, so it's hot. Um, but we ride to Augusta. I had spoken to him. I had said, you know, I just need you to sign this piece of paper. And he was like, you know, I'll, I'll get to it when I get to it. No, no, no. 
we're going to get to it as quickly as possible. So if that means I got to drive to Augusta tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock, I'm going to do that because I need that signature. I ain't telling him this. This was my attitude. Sure enough, went ahead, drove down there. I met him at the UPS store in Augusta. It's in the same Kroger shopping center. They had a notary there because I needed the papers to be notarized. So he pulls up. It's only been a week since I last saw him. It has been months since my aunt saw him. Okay. She had no idea of the condition that he was in. Again, I'm telling y'all when I met him, when he met my family, he was like a size three X in just a short span of time for a week. He easily could have been in an extra large, maybe even a large, but was wearing 3X clothes. So he has told me this whole time, he didn't know I had spoken to his family. Okay, probably need to put that in there. He did not know I had spoken to his cousin. So he was telling me that he had a place to stay. He was staying with some family members um, and everything was cool. He told me he was going back to Augusta because he had a job. That's what he told me. The family member, the cousin told me, oh no, it's not that he had a job. We kicked his ass out because he's still lying and we don't want, we don't want anything to do with him. So when I saw him get out the car, I immediately knew you probably have not washed in three days. I'm not overreacting. His nails had not been cut, so his nails were a bit long. He smelled like the Chattahoochee dump on a hot summer Georgia day. He stunk so bad. Um, and for a moment, I did not recognize the man I had been, that I was legally married to. I did not recognize him. Um, he almost looked, uh, what's the word? He may emanciate it. If I, I may be saying, I may be mispronouncing it, but the way someone looks when they have lost so much weight and it's almost like your skin and bones. He, he looked, he, obviously he looked homeless. He smelled homeless. Um, and my, my heart just kind of broke. It kind of did. I'll be honest. It kind of broke. Um, it did not break enough for me to not get that signature though. So when he walked into the UPS store, you clearly could see that some of the people were like, you know, let me, let me get away from him. Me, I just was like, okay, so I just need you to sign right here and I just need you to sign right there. Okay, and then a woman named Lauren came over and notarized the papers um, and then we were done because he signed the divorce agreement. He didn't even read it. He didn't even read it. Reason why I'm pointing that out is because he didn't read the part where what's left in the house now belongs to me where he took technically what he was going to take. Everything else in that home belongs to me. Remember, I told y'all he had left all his Invicta watches. He had left all his WWE championship belts, his Jordans, his a lot of his clothes, his Cole Hans. He had left all that stuff. He never even read the divorce agreement. So he signed it. I signed it. Lauren notarized it. We leave the store and I said, have you eaten? And he was like, yeah, um, I ate. It's just, you know, my knee. So again, he's, he's talking about the knee. But if you saw him, you would know there's way more to it than the knee. So I said to him, look, since you met me here, let me give you some money so you can get you some chicken nuggets. Yeah, that's what I said. You can get you some chicken nuggets. So I believe I gave him like five or six dollars. Go get you some chicken. I think I zelled it to him, actually. Just go get you some some food. Then we, because where he parked was not far. It was like, okay, I'm parked here. He's parked in front of me in the other row. So there's that aisle that you can drive down. Um, so I walked him to the car. And I saw the condition of the inside of the car. And that's when I knew he's been living in his car. 
he's been living in his car. So clearly I no longer had a question of, so where's this offshore account? Where's the U.S. bank savings account? Where's, where's the checking account? I didn't have that question anymore. Because if you had money, you wouldn't be living in your car. You would not be in the same clothes that you were in when you left my house on June 17th. And this is now June 25th. So he was like, I'm going to be all right. I'm about to start a new job. I'm going to be cool. I got a family member I can stay with. Um, everything's going to be okay. All right. Um, I said, I will let you know when the divorce is granted. I said, I will send you a copy of the divorce decree. And he was like, okay. He said, well, how long do you think that's going to take? I said, I'm not sure. I, I thought I had to wait 30 days before I could file the divorce agreement settlement form. And then the judge would grant it, um, in 30 days. So basically, this is like June 25th. I'm looking at the end of August that it would take for the divorce to be granted, assuming there were no hiccups, assuming he didn't decide he was going to pull a fast one. So I told him, I was like, I'm, I'm going to file this. And then once we get the divorce decree, I'll send you a copy. He said, OK, he got in his car. I got in my car. I drove all the way back home and he went to wherever he went. Next part is the next series of lies that I was faced with. All right, part 38 of who the fuck did I marry? I'm gonna call this uh, housekeeping and missing pieces. So housekeeping, um, first and foremost, as much as I know you all have enjoyed uh, this series and some of you have told me how um, entertaining you have found it, <laughs> um, the, the story will be done um this weekend so in other words i don't care how many parts i gotta film it will be done this weekend we're just not bring we're not gonna drag it into the new week um so i just want to let everyone know that so please be sure to tell your sisters your mamas your aunties your cousins your best friends hey y'all go ahead and watch all the parts because she's saying she's wrapping it up this weekend um but I'll leave the playlist up, so don't worry. Um, also, uh, let's see. I'm sorry for the people who were like, I keep talking really slow. I didn't know that I was, and they're like, you're just long-winded. I'm very detailed. So that's probably what you're feeling is that I'm detailed, and I'm trying to get everything out, again, in a responsible manner. So um, you all have asked me if I will do a live. Yes. I will. I don't have any issue doing a live. I feel like if you're going to put the story out there, you know you're going to get questions. So if you stand on business and you stand on what you said, do the live. So yes, I will do a live. And I will let you all know when I'm going to do a live. So it won't just be some random shit. I will actually do a live and um, let everyone know. So that way, if you have questions, bring them. Um, the issue with doing a live is that I need moderators. <laughs> so, because I just anticipate a lot of people have questions and I'm just one person and I don't want to be accused of she's ignoring my question, which means there's holes in her story. Y'all, we all know how TikTok is. So, but I will absolutely um, do a live. That's the housekeeping. Missing pieces. So when I said before that it's important to me that I am responsible in how I tell this story, meaning I'm clear and I go in detail, I realized that I left out some missing parts and it was brought to my attention by a number of you. Thank you, because I'm all for accountability. Um, I did not go into how he, how my ex-husband Legion left the condiment company and then went to Apple. I also did not go into detail on when my mom came to visit. Both of those were in the month of April. Um, I was going to go into detail a little bit more on the Apple situation because as you probably have figured out, of course something came out later on. But nevertheless, um, in terms of April of 2021, 
my mom came for a visit she lived in arkansas she came to visit us she came to visit us after we had that whole sexting on facebook incident and just after we had started marital counseling there were no fireworks during her visit there nothing was weird i did talk about how um, you know, my family has always been there. And if you spoke with my mom, she would tell you she didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Um, the, but there was something in her spirit that just didn't sit right. She didn't talk to me about it at the time. She did not raise her concerns. Um, she simply, when she came to visit, we welcomed her with open arms. Legion was excited to meet her. She was excited to meet him. We took my mom out to eat. Um, it was it was a typical, very quiet, um, non-active visit. I didn't know what my mother thought until later on. So she didn't share with me during the visit, something don't seem right. Um, she, she and I sat in the guest room talking. I never told her anything that was going on. Number one, because again, it goes back to that mindset of what happens in my marriage needs to stay in my marriage. Um, and I talk about how I didn't think it would, looking back, it was not a good idea that I told my aunt what had happened. My aunt is not the type that's gonna tell my mother. That, that in other words, if you confide in her, she keeps it between you and her. So my mom never knew that there were any issues. Um, and so there was, there was nothing for her to be on mama bear mode. Had she known, this would have been a very different trip. But she didn't know. So she did come to visit. Um, everything went fine. He and I put on a united front. Oh, we're so happy. We're so, you know, in love. Um, and yes, behind the scenes was a whole different story. He talked to her about how he was looking to buy a house and how he told her how work was going, you know, how his job, you know, little, how his job was going, um, you know, bragging as usual, which I had, I did tell my mom, look, he's going to talk about himself and money a lot. So, um, <laughs> just change the subject. If he brings up a house, change the subject. That was my instructions to her because I was like, I don't even want to get into the whole house situation. So other than that, uneventful. Now, once my mom left, this is still in April, everything was fine with him at the condiment company. As far as I knew, everything was fine. Um, what ended up happening is he randomly came home one day and starts complaining about changes that are going on at the company. When he started complaining about those changes, it was things like, um, keep in mind, he is not VP of the company. He was VP of, I, I keep getting it wrong, but I think it was VP of production is what the memo says. So he was not the second in command for the company. He was upset that he was being blamed for, um, production uh stats that the production was down he was upset that his plant manager apparently had um resigned he was upset that some of the policy changes that were coming into play that would affect his plant these are the things that he would he was coming home and complaining about literally he would complain, he started complaining Monday. By Friday, he said, you know what, if they continue doing this, then I just need to find another job. He was like, I think I'm gonna call my homeboy that I work with at Apple and I'm gonna see, you know, what they have available. Yes, there were red flags going up. Of course there were. Um, at this point, we're now, we're not even dealing with United Nations of red flags. We are dealing with the Olympics. We are dealing with the parade of all nations. Everybody got a red flag. So when he said that, I was kind of like, okay, because I had become numb to all the antics that he did. I was numb to it. So he literally said, I think I'm gonna call my homeboy and I'm gonna see what's at Apple. My response to him was, well, what about your salary? <laughs> um, would you take a pay cut? He was like, no, I'm not gonna take a pay cut. Like I wouldn't leave unless it's gonna be the same amount or more, or more money. Y'all, the next week, last week of April, I'm at work, minding my own business. 
he calls me and tells me I've decided to resign you what I've decided to resign don't worry don't don't get all crazy um, I had talked to my homeboy there is a position at Apple and I'm on my way there now to go and meet him so that I can get some information on the position we're married y'all we're married so what I said to him was well will you get all this in writing his words to me were, of course I'm going to get it in writing. I'm not stupid. You know what? I don't even want to talk to you no more. Click. That's the end of April. So that is how I was introduced to this Apple job. Again, if you stick with this series, you, you will find out exactly what happened. But that's how I was introduced to the Apple job. It literally was in a span of within two weeks and he resigned from the condiment company and immediately said, I'm going to move over to Apple. Just wanted to clarify that. So, we will continue on. Part 39, who the fuck did I marry? Everything you're going to hear um, probably in this part and the next part, all of this happens in the month of July, 2021. Divorce has been filed. It was filed the end of June. I got his signature on the divorce settlement agreement. Um, I thought that I had to wait 30 days before I could actually file that with the court. And so this is all, this is kind of in the limbo period because I th I'm still within those 30 days. So he left his book, he left a book bag um, at the house, book bag that had all kind of paperwork in there. Inside the book bag, this is the paperwork that I found. Number one, I found a doc, a uh, packet from the condiment company where it showed his 401k contributions. It also stated in there that he had been terminated. So he was terminated from the condiment company according to the paperwork in the packet that I saw in the book bag that he left at my house. Also in the book bag were um, paycheck stubs from a previous job where he worked at a cemetery. The same cemetery that he took me to to show me where his grandmother and grandfather were buried. So let's go ahead. I'll, sh I'll do this video and say this is what he told me. This is what I confirmed. He told me his grandmother and grandfather were buried there. He showed me a headstone with a family name on it. If you go back in previous parts, it's I talk about it. Um, the truth is they are not buried there. He is of no relation to the people who are buried at that particular grave site. Only reason why he knew about it is because he had worked there. Also in the book bag, it was a copy of a driver's license that he had the address on the driver's license now this i still don't have an answer to but the address on the driver's license was the same address as the cemetery because i looked it up on google also in the book bag um was paperwork from another construction company job meaning it was paycheck stubs from another construction company here in atlanta that he had worked for it did not have dates on it so i don't know when he worked for the construction company also in the book bag paperwork was unemployment um paperwork so it looked like he had been receiving unemployed unemployment just before I met him. I met him in March. It looked like he had been receiving unemployment January and February. So once again, let's confirm. He did not work for the condiment company for six to seven years. Also in there were scraps of paper from a temp agency where it was, it was information on the job that he had been placed at. Where was that job? The condiment company. He would be a forklift slash loader is what it said so i interpret that to mean he can drive a forklift a forklift but he would have been loading up the 18 wheelers for them to go out to their deliveries also in this book bag um was paperwork from 
Clayton County courts, I believe, um, for a week, uh, uh, what is it called? A weekender jail. It was like a weekender jail receipt. So I had to do some research. So apparently what that means is that there is an option where if you have a job, let's say you ha you were sentenced to six, 60 days in jail, but you have a full-time job. Apparently the court can say, okay, you'll go to jail on the weekends. So in other words, you have to report to the jail on Friday at five o'clock and you'll be there Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you will get out Sunday at six o'clock. Apparently that's actually a real thing. So what was in the book bag were multiple yellow receipts for different weekends that he had to report and get out of jail. Last but not least, um, there were some additional pictures and then there were some, um, and when I say pictures, I'm talking about family photos. And then there were some, there was another additional copy of his driver's license with the Douglasville address. I looked up that address. The name associated with that address was the same name as the ex-girlfriend that he had in between the ex-wife and me. If you go back to the video where I talk about the conversation I had with the ex-wife, she tells me that the address was going to come back to the ex-girlfriend. I'm simply saying that is correct. So what she told me is true. So <clears throat> because of everything that I found, I decided to go down a new rabbit hole. Again, just recapping what I said um, in previous videos. Ex-husband was always a stickler about law enforcement. His dad was a um, retired police officer. I'm just telling y'all the story. His dad was a retired police officer. Mom was a retired teacher. Um, after his parents, after his dad retired, they moved to Augusta, started a church. He took me to that church in Augusta. The same day that he took me to meet his aunt who lived in Augusta. So these are now things that he actually took me to, just like he took me to the cemetery. So that's what I found in the book bag. The Weekender Jail Receipts. I went ahead and went online to find out exactly why did he have to go to jail for the weekend and I'm going to end this part here the next part has to do with his criminal history part 40 who the fuck did I marry so we are now at the point of July 2021 we are at the point where I've spoken to the female cousin and she gave me the phone number for the older brother for the purposes of this video we're going to call him Chris Chris I was very nice. I called him. He was gracious. Um, he was willing to answer whatever questions I had. And what he said to me was, he was, he said, my brother has always been a liar. He's always been a liar. He said, but ask me what questions you have and I'll confirm what's real and what's not. First question I had was, when was the last time you spoke to him? Without missing a beat, Chris says, um, 2015, just after our mother's funeral. I explained to him about the phone calls, the fact that Legion would be on the phone for 30, 35 minutes, laughing, talking to Chris, relaying messages from Chris to me and relaying messages from me to Chris. Without missing a beat, Chris says he was never talking to me. And I said, and he said, now I'm, I am going to say this. Maybe he was on the phone, but he was not on the phone with me. He said, because he knows that if I ever see him, I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> and I'm laughing because obviously Legion loves to say I'm going to whoop somebody's ass. Um, so for the people who were confused, like, wait, what does this mean about the phone calls? What this means is every single time that my ex-husband was on the phone, holding his phone like this, 
talking, <laughs> laughing, cracking jokes. Hey, um, my wife said that, you know, we can go later on this evening and all this other stuff. Every time they were doing things like that, every time he was having a phone call or conversation that he claims to be with Chris, no one is on the phone. No one's on the phone. That is what that means. So I'm on the phone with Chris. My mind is spinning. It is blowing up like a volcano. I mean, I'm I'm going crazy. I'm going crazy. Because what this means is that for the past four or five months, every morning that he is having a phone call with his brother Chris, I am now understanding in real time that that phone call was completely fake. So Chris tells me, Maybe he was talking to somebody else, but it wasn't me. He said the only family member that Legion actually talks to is the twin. And that's only because for some reason, I guess this is their twins. He helps him out when he needs it. Legion only calls the twin when he needs money. And the twin, according to Chris, now this is the part that might blow some minds. The twin brother, the one that is older by 20 minutes, is VP of his company is married, drives a luxury car, and lives in like a four or five bedroom house in Nashville. So Chris is saying to me, he was like, it sounds like he took the identity of the twin and was trying to act like that's his life. And it's not, he was like, that nigga ain't never had no money, ain't never kept a job a long period of time. And he was like, and you're telling me that he claims he was VP of a company? And so he was like, did you ever see anything? Did you ever meet people like that? Like Chris, I respect the fact that he was asking me the same questions y'all are asking me. Did you ever meet any family members? And I told him, I said, I met your aunt. Well, what aunt is that? I told him her name. He said, that ain't our damn aunt. I don't know if y'all have ever dealt with people from Philly. So he was just loud. <laughs> he was like, that ain't our aunt. He said, that is our mother's best friend. And I don't trust that hoe. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just, it's the way he said it that I, I, it makes me laugh. Anyway, he's like, I don't trust her. I don't trust her at all. She, she is not our aunt. She was our mother's best friend when our mother was living in Augusta. She's not our aunt. So then I explained to him about the other brothers. The brothers, remember, there were two half-brothers from his dad. One lived in Baltimore, one lived in Augusta. Chris is on the phone saying, I don't know who them niggas are. They ain't related to us. He said, our dad never had other kids. He was like, so you mean to tell me this nigga going around telling people that our dad had kids on our mom? And I said to him, well, the way he actually put it is that the, the two brothers came before y'all. He was like, hell no. No. So and then I explained to him about the sisters. He was like, who the hell is Shantae? And I was like, Shantae, apparent, again, I'm just telling you what I was told. Shantae is a sister that lives in Douglasville, married with two kids. He was like, no, we don't have a sister told him about Kim he was like Kim's not our sister she's a cousin and she and he said to me and I know she ain't talked to him in forever in two days he said so everyone the only people who are his family members is Chris and the twin he's like we got some cousins up here I told him about Junebug I told him about the uncle I told him about the grandmother and he's just sitting back like oh my god he said he was like I realized that every relationship my brother gets in he gets worse and it sounds like he is actually worse than what he was in the last relationship and I thought he was talking about the ex-wife that I had spoken to no he had no idea there was another wife because again, he hasn't spoken to him since 2015. So he was like, the best thing I can say to you is this. He said, thank God you ain't have kids with him. He said, get your divorce and forget you ever met this man. And he was like, and I know how that sounds because he's my brother. He said, but if I didn't have to claim him, I wouldn't. And I, and I said to him something that I... I 
should have probably said in this in this whole TikTok series, this is not someone that you forget. This is not a situation that, you know, man, I don't, I don't even remember him. No. What I don't remember is the version of myself before I met him. Because nothing so far has turned out to be true. The only thing that Chris was able to tell me is true is that, number one, yes, there is a brother in Philly, him. Yes, there is a brother in Nashville, the twin. Yes, both parents are deceased. That is what I was told from the beginning. Those pieces of information are true. The grandmother did die in 2008. He was like, no, she didn't. She definitely didn't die in 2020. I told him how I found the obituary. And so he was like, and the uncle, he said, which uncle is he talking about? Because if you guys remember back in one of the parts, I talk about where he said his uncle was giving him advice on why he should not open up his, um, his, his, uh, savings account to let me see it. He would not let me see it. And so I'm telling Chris about the uncle and he was like that uncle been dead for years I told him about Junebug he said Junebug been dead for years and I said Chris he was having conversations with Junebug on the phone in front of me he was like it wasn't Junebug he said it sounds like my brother was making up the conversations he said he definitely was making up the conversations with me he said, hell no, nah, I ain't going to be on the phone at no six o'clock in the morning. So the conversation with Chris solidified that this is the actual family tree. And no, there were never any conversations with his brother every morning um, when I was getting ready to go to work. They had never talked. On to the next part.